Welcome to Math 99. Uh, this is Supplement 1, and we're just going to start talking about um, what we call parent functions. And uh, parent functions in math are basic functions that we can we can build shapes off of. And our, our most familiar one, I think, is, is linear, just a straight line. And it's the function y equals x. So if I have a graph like this, y equals x is just this line that kind of has this 45 degree angle. So there's a graph of, uh, of y equals x, the linear, linear relation. Uh, the next one I want to do is the quadratic. And quadratic you've seen before, I'll bet. It is uh, those parabolas. So um, one interesting thing about the, the parent function for quadratic is y equals x squared. And uh, one interesting thing about these is the way that they grow. Um, it first off goes over one, up one, then it goes over one, up two, then it goes over one, um, up three. And it keeps growing that way and then it makes a quadratic. Now we can make them grow at different rates. And the way I drew it isn't that great. It really should curve out at the bottom. It's a nice continuous curve. So that's our that's our quadratic um, parent function. That's what it looks like, y equals x squared. Next one I'm going to do is the cubic function. And as you can guess, it is cubed. And the way that it looks is uh, like this. So one would be here, two, two, when x is two, this would be all the way at, up at eight. This is y equals x cubed. Um, let me get a couple more up here. Uh, one that you've, I know that you've used before is a square root. And the square root is kind of half of a parabola on its side. Goes up one over one, then it goes over two up one, then it goes over three up one. Looks like that. And the equation is y equals the square root of x. I'm going to get a few more up here. I also have the absolute value. So the absolute value parent function, um, absolute value y equals absolute value of x, just kind of these straight up and down lines. And what absolute value says is, um, how far is this thing from zero? It basically takes positive, uh, negative things and turns them positive. So that's what that graph looks like for absolute value. And there's, I think, one more I'm going to put on here. I'm just going to put the inverse function on here as well. Um, and we have, we have actually kind of already dealt with some inverse functions. 1 over x. But what the graph looks like, the graph is pretty interesting, I think. Uh, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. It goes through that point. Inverse function looks like that. So you should be able to um, look at these shapes and uh, tie them back to which, which one that they are. Eventually in the course, what we're going to do is we're going to keep working with them. We're going to start stretching these, moving them around, um, that sort of thing. This is also called the reciprocal. But just being able to recognize the shapes is a good place to start right now. I'm going to race, and then we'll talk a little bit about some more stuff. Now, we've talked before about uh, domain and range um, when we we're first talking about functions. And the domain is the, the inputs. It is the x values. And the range is the outputs. It's the, it's the y values. So if I have a function, and let's say it looks like this. Uh, notice it ends here. Uh, actually, it ends here and ends here. Those are both endpoints. Comes all the way down, touches this point. I'm just going to assume the scale is one. So these are these are changing by ones. 
So if I want to talk about the, the domain, this, the domain is all the x values that this, this goes through. So the way that I like to think about domain is, um, you know, this is x right here. So the domain is, notice the furthest to the left this thing gets is negative 3. And then it goes all the way over here to positive 4. And it can be positive 4 and it can be negative 3. Um, that's my domain. So I'm going to say my domain goes from, I'm going to use the hard bracket because it includes this negative 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And then it goes all the way to positive 4. So this notation is, is basically saying um, negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. This is, this is called interval notation. And the hard bracket means it is part, it's included in it. Um, that's like less than or equal to. Um, if it was just strictly less than, I would use a soft bracket, like a parenthesis. So my domain is all the numbers from negative 3 to 4. I really just literally think about if this thing just collapsed onto the x-axis, what would it cover? And it would cover everything from negative 3 to 4. It would just blanket it. Great. So then let's, uh, let's think about the range. What would the range be? And the range, similarly, is all the y's. So if I think about all the, the y's on this, that's going to be like... Notice like it gets down here to negative 1, and then it comes all the way up here to positive 3. Remember I was talking about it like collapsing onto the x-axis? Same thing, have it collapse straight onto the y-axis. And what all would it touch on that y-axis? So this range is, um, it goes from negative 1 all the way up to positive 3. So that's how on, a, on that graph I can, I can come up with the domain and range for it. Let me do another example. Now notice before I had um, I had the dots, the closed circles. So that means that that's part of it. Uh, when it's an open circle, that means it's a boundary that's not included. So this one, two, three, this negative three that's right here is not on the function, but this is getting closer and closer to negative three as it can from this side. So negative two point nine nine, negative two point nine 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 nine. They're just not negative three. So that's going to mess with my uh, domain. And it does it here, 1, 2, 3, at positive 3 as well. So let's do domain. And for domain, I'm thinking uh, x. Domain is the, all the x values. So it actually isn't at negative 3, but it gets really close to it. And then it comes all the way out here to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I were writing this, I would say negative 3 uh, from negative 3 to 5, where negative 3 is not included in it, but 5 is included in it. So if it's an open circle, it's going to be a soft bracket, a parenthesis. And if it's a closed uh, dot, closed circle, it's going to be a hard bracket. All right, let's think about this range then. Uh, remember, range is the y values. So this gets down here to negative 2. That is included. And it gets all the way up here to positive 3, but that positive 3 is not included. So this would be... Um, from negative 2 all the way up to 3, but 3 is not included. So there's my interval uh, notation for domain and range on these. There's one more piece I want to talk about for domain and range, and that's for um, when my functions, I don't, I'm not looking at graphs, but I'm looking at some, um, some representation of it, some expression. So let's say I had f of x equals 2x plus 5. You know, I know that's a straight line. I know that it goes through the point 0, 5, 0, 2, and it keeps on going forever in both directions. So notice in this one, um, my domain is anything. So I could say it goes from negative infinity to infinity. And now I use the soft bracket with infinity because infinity isn't a number. It can't really be equal to it. It's just a direction that it's headed. And for the range, same thing. This thing grows without bound in both directions. So the range ranges from negative infinity to infinity. Great. Let's look at uh, maybe, maybe another one. Uh, g of x 
is uh, something like 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. So if I look at, as I look at this equation, um, I'm, I'm actually really just curious about the domain of it right now. And the domain, remember, is x values. So it feels like, like, what can I plug into this? What are the possible things I can plug into this domain? And it feels like anything. But the problem is this. I cannot divide by zero. It, it's a broken function. It breaks the function. So there's two ways to write this domain. I know that x cannot be 1, because if it is, I'd be dividing by zero. So I could say my domain is such that x is, cannot equal 1. If I wanted to set, write this in the set notation, I would say it can run from um, negative infinity all the way up to 1, but it can't be 1. And I'm going to union that. I'm going to join that with a set that runs from 1 all the way to infinity. So basically, this is just saying I have a hole at 1. And that's one thing to look for for domain is just make sure you're not dividing by 0. Here's another example. So I want to do another example of finding just the domain of this. And I know that um, one piece for domain is that I can't divide by so I'm, I'm, I'm always going to check to make sure I'm not dividing by zero for my domain restrictions. So in this one, I can, I'll just factor this denominator, uh, x plus 3 times x plus 2. And I notice that, like, that means that x cannot be equal to negative 3 or negative 2. So one way I could, I could describe that domain is x cannot be negative 3 or negative 2. And if I do that as a set uh, in that interval notation, Negative infinity to negative 3, those are all good, but negative 3 cannot be included. I'm going to union that with anything between negative 3 and negative 2. Notice I have a hole here at negative 3. And I'm going to union that with everything from negative 2 up to infinity. I have a hole here at negative 2. So I can write it that way too. So there's one more thing I want to worry about with domain, and I'll add it here in just a minute. So um, here is another function j of x is the square root of x plus 2. So the other thing is I don't want to take the square root of the negative because I'm going to get an imaginary number. I'm, I'm restricted over the rule, reals. So the other thing I need to make sure is that um, anything that's square rooted is greater than or equal to 0. So I can just take anything that's in the square root, set it up this way, and solve. So subtract 2 from both sides. x is greater than... Uh, or equal to negative 2. So my domain, I could write it this way, or I could write it as, let's see, if x is anything greater than negative 2, that means, or equal to, so negative 2 can be part of my solution from negative 2 up to infinity. So my two things for domain, don't divide by 0, don't take the square root of a negative. Other than that, uh, it's going to be pretty much free reign. Give those problems in that supplementary package, guy. Uh, let me know what you uh, what questions you have, and uh, post post questions in the forum or send them to me via messaging.